Hey guys, this is Andrew Peters with WordPressForChurch.com. We're in the middle of our WordPress uh, for Church Basics series. And so today I want to show you another thing that every church site needs to have, and that is the calendar section and how to set it up. And for nearly every site that I've built for the calendar, for upcoming events, that, by the way, this is Summit Crestview. This is actually the church I serve on staff at, and I built this site uh, a number of months ago when we were going through our relaunch. And so I have to add an event today. And so we're going to look at the calendar that we use as a plugin called Event On. This is pretty much what it looks like once you've once you've added uh, added something. Like you can see, there's a place to put forms, event details. People need to RSVP for our newcomer lunch. It's right there. Our new members dinner, um, or nation service is what we have one soon. And uh, so I'm going to show you how to build this type of calendar and uh, what goes into it. Again, we use uh, a calendar called Event On. I'll put a link to purchase it from Code Canyon. In the in the post for this, and as well as the um, the video description, so let's go ahead and jump over to our dashboard real quick. Uh, from our dashboard, you can find out this is after I've already uploaded, activated, put the license in for event on. And before we jump into just adding an event, I want to take you to some of the settings that uh, that we go through. So we'll go to my event on settings. This is just kind of like a welcome page, like, hey, this is a cool plugin. Thank you for purchasing it. Uh, so here's all the settings that we have. You can do a ton with these. Um, and I won't go through every one because it's just going to take you sitting down and looking at, at some of these. Most of these are stuff that you might not even have to mess with for a church or for a ministry. Um, one thing I do is I set the colors based on um, the site that I'm building. Uh, you can change the event details icon, different icons for whatever you're doing, they're already set for pretty common sense things like the time icon's a clock so it doesn't get more simpler, more simple than that. And you can change some of how the event card looks, uh, where you want things placed in the event card. One cool thing is this right here, uh, where they have third party API support for the, the event on calendar. What that means is that if we're having, for example, it, it links with Eventbrite. And so what that means is that if someone wants to register for an event, I can connect our calendar directly to our Eventbrite. And um, when, you're, when you're adding the event, you just pretty much link it to Eventbrite there. You can do the same with PayPal if someone needs to pay for a ticket. Um, you can go through all these right here. They're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but it comes out of the box set up pretty, pretty well for you to just jump in and start posting stuff. And so let's go ahead and go over to our events. So we'll add an event. That was the wrong thing for me to click on. We will add an event right here. And you can see right here it has add new event, event location. You can save your locations in here so it just populates quickly when you're typing. Another cool thing is the event types that they have. Say you have like a regular service that can be an event type and then event type 2 can be a conference or you can have like different ministries be an event type and then event type 2 be in conference. Well, however you want to do it really. And here's all the, the events that we've had um, for the past few months. Uh, let's go ahead and add a new one. So you'll go to add new event. And it's kind of like creating a blog post. It's kind of like creating a page. You just kind of point and click and, and fill in the info as it comes up, uh, whatever the event is. And so your event title goes here. I'm entering a, a, an event for our Youth Burn Fest. Or excuse me, our youth group is called Elevate, so we'll name it Elevate Burn Fest. And right here, I would just enter the event info, and I'll go back and do that for time's sake. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna type out what it is and everything right now. Um, it's gonna be a church event, so that's the category that it belongs to. Uh, I'm gonna select this color because I want it to look, I want it to have this color right here. And event times and settings. It's going to be uh, this Wednesday at six. And I'm going to hide. You can put it in time in, but it's just like a regular service. You don't usually put it in time, and so you can hide the end time from this. Um, you can also create a repeating event uh, if you have something you do like every every month that you want to put in. You can do it right here. This is not a repeating event, so we're not going to uh, save location. You can you can go back up to that events tab and you can select from ones that you already have saved. This was going to be at the Null Blocks. It's gonna it's a family in our church. It's going to be at their house, and uh, I'll put their I'll put their uh, 
their real address in later. Just for time's sake, I'm going to put in the church's address. Uh, event organizer, so if you have someone that needs to be contacted depending on what's going on, you can put their info here. Um, and then you can select what you want as far as a link. Say you Say you want a link to put in here. So if someone clicks on the event, you can put in a link to open up in a new window. For right here, I have it, I have all mine set to this. You see that arrow? It's a slide down card, so that just means it does that right there. Slides down. Uh, and this one right here is a pop out, which means if someone clicks on it, it just comes up in like a light box. I want it to stay uh, uniform with everything else we have, and so it's just going to stay right there like that. Here's where you can connect the Eventbrite. So you'll just you if you need to connect to Eventbrite you just click connect and then you'll put in like the event ID and it'll connect automatically to your to your um, your Eventbrite page so let's go ahead and publish that and while that's publishing we'll go over here and refresh this we'll refresh this page it should come up uh, the first event right here there it is right there here's where your event info will come out remember what you write in the big box here's the time the location and uh, like I said I set it to just kind of scroll down now how do we get this page right here how did this calendar even show up here well we can an answer that by going to edit this page and event on they use short codes to um to fill in their data and so what it looks like is is when you add it to a page it just looks like this right here that's all it looks like and and what event on does is it it adds this little tab right here so you'll just click on add event on uh, if you want a main calendar I use the events list uh, it just looks sharper for what a church does you can limit the number of months if you have a lot of events you can limit the event count so people are just focused on what's upcoming and not a long way down if you need to skip a month you can do month increments hide past events um, you can hide empty months uh, if you if you have a month where there's not something showing up and uh, the, just little little features right here if you have event type color override say I just want to use that red color but if I had others mixed in I could do the event type color override and it would use just that one um, there's just a lot that you can do with it uh, the main calendar as well uh, it has a widget that you can add to certain areas like a sidebar if you just want to put some of your events there and they can just use a little scroll bar to go through those it's a really neat plug-in um, just for churches I recommend this though uh, I'm sorry let me backtrack so you just put this in here you update uh, once you put this short code in and it comes out excuse me comes out looking just like the page that has that calendar on it now for churches Here's what I recommend because we have things that are weekly events that we meet every every Sunday. Uh, every Tuesday, we're going to have worship practice. Every Wednesday, we're going to have youth service. Every Friday, we're going to have an encounter service. I, I recommend for churches and ministries that have weekly events to not put those in their upcoming events. And the reason is this. If you have weekly events, that means that th there's going to be 16 things in this July for just your weekly events, not to mention these others. Not to mention, they're probably not even going to see September. We have some events I have to put up in August. But they're just going to see all the events that are regular services, and they're not going to pay attention. They're going to have to go looking for um, these other events, and they're not even going to know they're there unless they're going to look for them. So if you're operating the, the site for your church, I recommend just creating a column for weekly events over here so, and where you list all the things that happen on a regular basis. And then for your special one-time events that happen – quarterly happen every few months or even just even just once a month that's what you use the calendar for just upcoming events that are other other than your weekly events um, again this is event on calendar plugin I will put uh, some links to get this in your in in the in the description for the video and in the blog post I love this plug in, plug in I use it on nearly every site it's done really well for us um, I hope you enjoy it too Thank you for watching this WordPress for Church video. More to come.